I'm not kidding you, there's a lot of money being printed in 24. I think it's going to be a big bull run. I've been shitting on this stock forever. It's this stock called <gasps> With $10,000, if you're making 5% a year, right, it's taking you forever to make no money. A lot of like uh, investment like gurus, oh, I made 30% a year doing COVID. I'm like, bitch, I made 1,000% and it changes mm. lives. I don't think that I really did a lot of things this year. You probably actualized this two years about half an M. Half a million doing nothing, what the <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome to yet another episode of Cafe Money. Today, we're going to discuss what happened in 2023 and more importantly, 2024 investment ideas. But anyway, let's call the elephant in the room. Mm. This is probably one of the worst <laughs> podcasts <laughs> in Singapore. Very awkward or in the world. Just in now. The world. <laughs> 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 really awkward, huh? One you year know we produced like, like what, three, three episodes. <laughs> three episodes. And it's a season finale. Really, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's bad, so yeah. long since we last did this podcast. I feel so stressed with things. It feels very different, yeah. It's so not, to not it. used to this. The last one we did was in Bali, right? Yeah, you guys were in Bali. Yeah. Yes. It's not even like a real And it was podcast. like so casual. We were doing it through Zoom. Yeah. Remember? Right. Yeah. So I was, I was the only one in the studio and uh and people um say that uh, can you stop talking uh, let the let the, let your guests <laughs> talk. Uh, so that was a uh, <laughs> last like, podcast. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, was yeah. Like, it was okay. Uh, uh it doesn't feel like yeah. um three podcasts purely because I think the amount of times we meet up lah. I mean so many times we were meeting up for durians mm. we were meeting up for dinner yes. and katan katan game <laughs> yeah we've been up for catch up so uh, it does feel uh, strange in front of camera but um, catching up wasn't I mean like, we, we've been always hanging out mm. and later as well for lunch so really want to talk about 2023 give some update to viewers about what happened in 2023 and, and yeah just sum up about this year in the investment scene right what mm. are we up to and more importantly what you guys should look out for for 2024 based on what we will be doing. Yeah. yeah. So maybe we can start with uh, Benny first. Hey, tell us about like, you know, what's up for you in 2023. Wow. Two what, what's your highlight for 2023? Uh, yeah. 2023 is a uh, extremely eventful year because uh, I decided to really have part uh, as well of uh, what I know about uh, investment to go deeper into uh, real estate in a, a more unique approach. Lah. So some of the highlights will be, I'm actually an executive producer of uh, one of the movies that's coming out in 2024. What? Ooh. You're going to do a movie? Yeah, it's happening in Chinese Already TV. Uh, one of the biggest bo blockbusters yeah. in Singapore. So uh, I was uh, helping out with the narrative. Uh, I have a small cameo inside. But more importantly, I was looking at the, um, the, the cuts as well. So I was mm. quite excited, you know, because it's the biggest franchise in Singapore. Mm -hmm. If you're in Singapore, you'll know this movie. It's, it's a very big movie in Singapore. I think I know what you're talking about, yes, but yes, we yes, cannot yes. talk about it yeah. until... Until it's out, right? Yeah. So by the time they watch it, it might be out. But anyway, so, mm. so that's it. And um, I went into venture into the hotel business. So in Vietnam, I own about six buildings right now of hotel. Six Ooh. buildings. Oh, so you don't yes. own houses, you own buildings now. So it's a combination of small houses and buildings. So uh -huh. there's one with a 66 key launching in two months. Uh, many of them are smaller houses. It's really taking the concept of rent to rent, but to a whole stratosphere idea because I was just really looking at rent to rent and I realized the Singapore market rent to rent is uh, overhyped and depressed. So I mm. took this concept to countries that really give me a 5x return based on, uh, based on, based on safetyness, which means the rent is so low but when you rent out per room, right, it really hits the high level. Okay, as well. maybe uh, let me uh, dummy down for most people. <laughs> rent to rent meaning to say that you rent a space, uh, like a long term lease, and yeah. after that maybe you do an Airbnb. Yeah. With it. Or you probably have to do some renovation and cut yeah. out the units into multiple little yeah. smaller so, rooms, so and it, then you like, rent it out. It's not like a hype, but yeah. it, but in Singapore it's so optimized because we are one of the most competitive countries yeah. in the world. So what is like for every one dollar you put in, what is your reward? Thanks for breaking it down simply because I know I was uh, speeding through too fast, right? So yeah. I mean, like think about it. If you if you rent a room for like four thousand, mm -hmm. if you rent out all the rooms, you make six thousand. Mm -hmm. It sounds like oh, two thousand positive cash flow, right? But mm -hmm. actually, the risk is that if one of the rooms don't rent out, you are pretty much break even. Yeah, I see. Right, and two rooms don't rent out, you're negative, right? So. Mm -hmm. So the risk reward is quite. It's, it's, I, I don't think it's high. It's, okay. it's, it's a good, interesting concept. So every for high. like, I mean, for every one dollar, how much will you make back? I, I don't know. Just just give me. So a for every four dollar, you make five dollar, right? Huh? Uh, so so I mean, I, yeah. uh, so so. Four dollar you make five dollar. Oh shit, that's pathetic. Okay, so for but, your Vietnam, uh, for, for the hotels, Vietnam, uh, every one dollar I make four dollar. 
Yeah, yeah it's, but, just, it's, but it is, it's different, yeah. But this kind of investment is actually very good for people who really want to start a real estate investment yeah. mm-hmm. with very, very little money down. Because you don't buy property, you don't own it, right? Your probably capital yeah. but uh, I see is it's probably the, yeah. the, the, the deposit that you put in and maybe some renovation yeah. fees. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I say word of caution because people might hear this and say, oh, it's a, it's a good model to go in. I say mm. it is a business move, not a real estate move yeah. anymore. Mm. And more importantly, um, when I'm in Vietnam, my lease is way longer. So I'm not risking two years lease. So basically, I take this concept and realize that it's not new. I mean, look at doing hotel business, doing this, that means they are renting a lease for 10 years. I mean, when it's all good and rental, I guess you get a lot of good positive cash flow. You get sufficient cash flow every month coming into your pocket, right? But it takes a lot of effort to actively maintain it. Yes. Because That's why you need a team. 100%. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. I think it's the next level by building hotels, uh, taking over hotels, uh, acquiring, building. Then, of course, wow. I'm very busy in Bali. After you guys came up for Bali, that was my time of getting so busy because uh, I started to look at the villa that we have, uh, completing the villa, which is a very interesting I can't learning believe curve. We, we went to Bali to buy the villa in February. Yes. And it's about like 10 months already. Our villa is still not ready. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of cock up along the way. There's a lot of learning curve. But, you know, Chewy is the champion. Like she found a solution for everything. And, um, you yeah. know, things were going not very really efficiently. And yeah. as, usual, as usual, every time we go into the country, we need to like test the country. Mm. We need to yeah, that's, that's why I say 100%. No yeah. endorsement uh, at the start. And more importantly, I guess I also end up realizing network is very important because yeah. through some good networks, managed to pull the right people in to make that happen. Mm. And right now, I'm looking at um, developing villas in Bali as well. So that, that's, that's, that's me uh, re- reinventing um, wow. my business as a whole. And uh, it's Sounds a, like a very, very eventful and busy it's year. Very busy. Yeah. 2023. It's a huge year for me. I mean, uh-huh. growth personally wise. Mm-hmm. I mean, about tearing myself apart about learning about what can be done as a business owner and also being very, very happy. Lah. I mean, to be able to do things that is like childhood dream lah, to say that you own a hotel and all this stuff. Yeah. Sounds very big whoa, whoa words, lah, but yeah. it's just good to, to, to do it. Lah. It's hard work, lah, definitely, but it's fun. Nice. So that's my life. Busy as hell like you guys know like pretty yes. much um, they even went on a holiday even without me right? that's so sad <laughs> because I was so busy right so oh, so sad right you guys were even like, in, like good holidays in the Japan and all that I was just like seeing photos on the WhatsApp right so Chewy what's up with you how's your 2023 my 2023 this year you know, like last night when we decided to do this podcast, I really spent some time thinking about my life in 2023. <laughs> I think like, my gosh, this year just sped through so fast, so quickly. I don't think that I really did a lot of things this year, but yet I know I'm <sighs> very, very, very be- busy. So in this entire year itself, I think I have been to seven different countries and maybe 13 different cities. Wow. wow. And mainly for work. So more than half the year you're away from Singapore. Yes. I am travelling every month at least like maybe two, three times. Mm. Short did, did, trip, did, long trip. Okay, do you so, like it or do you not like it? Yeah. I like it or like it. <laughs> I don't know how to say. Okay, you know, like it, it, it used to be a very exciting concept. Wow, you travel for work is really very fun, right? Mm. I think it is still fun, very exciting because when you go to different country, yeah. you have a lot of uh, different perspective and you meet different people. Yeah. So, uh, like, let's say for example, for 2023, yeah. did you achieve, like, what, what, what are your achievements in 2023, like, other than traveling to so many countries? Yeah, so traveling to different countries, mainly for work, right? And mm. uh, setting up a, a office uh, in, in Malaysia right now and building a team over there. That's what I did mainly mm. for this year, like, to make sure that we hire people in, write people in, some people come in and out. Then how about your Vietnam team? The Vietnam team is auto running already. Well, was it done this year or last year? This it was this year. That team wasn't set up by me. We already have a good partner working mm. in Vietnam mm. who was already like you know getting things yeah. moving. Oh. Yeah. So like when you asked Chewy what what was her twenty twenty three, she's like ah you know I'm just this, this. actually she went to different countries to yeah. set up an entire company to hire yeah. like yeah. 10, 20 people. Crazy. Yeah, that's that's nothing to her. <laughs> that is uh, be- busyness la, yeah, busyness la. Like when the our Bali villa had some issues she settled everything like, mm. like, like I mean that's also the reason why the Bali 
Villa even has issue in the first place. La. I mean, I, didn't, I think I didn't really spend a lot of time on it. I pretty much left mm. it to the uh, project manager yeah. in, in uh, Bali to run everything. Mm. And then when I step in to look at things, I realized, hey, you know what? Something is not quite right. Fire that so, bugger and you do everything change, yourself. Yeah, yeah, we change, change, change. And mm. yeah. I couldn't imagine myself doing what you do, man. Like, Why? You know how to like... It's like, crazy. She runs... Yeah. Top run. down like what? 60 plus people and all that. Yeah. So she's... Mm. she's yeah, that's, that's what's her 2020. She's just being humble. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just a year of like traveling and moving from countries to countries, cities to cities mm. and meeting a lot of people. I think... Okay, I think my biggest achievement this year is probably spending a lot of time... Um, building my leadership skill and training up people and building teams mm. la, within mm. the company. I think that's awesome. the mainly what How's I investment? <laughs> we can talk about 2023 investments later. Like, like oh, oh no, you, you mm. know, we can talk about it now, now, now. Well, you know what? I want to ask about your personal life. Yeah, so how is I actually want to ask yeah. about like he, a good boy, yeah. how, how are is you your 2023? Yeah. What is your highlight? Highlight? <laughs> yeah. So many girlfriends. <laughs> no, kidding, Is that kidding. your highlight? No, 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 no kidding. Okay, my, my, my highlight was uh, actually I sent you some pictures. I was uh, diving uh, and I dived together the mentaris. Yes. And I realized mentaris are really smart. They, they, one of the things I learned is that they need to see your eyes before they come close to you or not. They do not kidding want to. Me. Yeah, because they, imagine. Like they need to see human eyes. They need it. Your goggles need to be clear. You need to be looking huh? at them. They need to see your eyes. What if you the goggle is like blur, cannot they, see they, your they, eyes? And they also uh, look at like divers, where, whether you are the seasoned diver. They, uh. they know whether you're experienced or not experienced. And they'll come close to you. And there was one time, uh, one of the instructors there, she, uh, she was telling me, uh, when they come close to you, you flip around. So I, I what this year I also did cons conservation diving. Yeah. I have so many hours underwater. It's like I can be a master diver. So how many hours have you clocked this year? Oh my God. Like, no, I don't clock hours. I clock uh, dives, like, uh -huh. like 40 yeah. dives uh -huh. or something like that. It's yeah. nuts. It's yeah, like it's every lot. day, two I mean, hours. Like every day, every day, day two, two dives, dives for right? one yeah. month. It's, it's nuts. Yeah. So I was like so seasoned that when the, the, the mentor is coming, I just did a proper flip without moving so no arms no movement and I was just floating there he just came right in front of me oh, and stared me in the eyes oh my god that feeling sounds is like, like life of pie you know? that, that, <laughs> that was the best moment of my 2023 yeah yeah wow yeah, nice so other than that uh, obviously what else did you do in, uh, uh, this year I mean uh, <laughs> I think uh, brotherhood was important uh, I, I, my network and um, a lot of good friends around me mm. and also cut, cutting shit people on my life <laughs> yeah. I mean thanks you can also made some um, awesome friends yeah, yeah. right, right. Yeah, awesome yeah, YouTubers yeah. and all uh, I was very, very grateful also yeah. Yeah, just yeah. to learn from I think the thing is uh, because um, it's always good to learn from different perspective from industry leaders mm. so one of the things that I get, I get a lot from Ken was uh, his network as well he introduced yeah. me introduced us yeah. some uh, awesome YouTubers that yeah. really shapes the way we see uh, the market and how, uh, how, the, how, how the world YouTuber works. YouTuber works yeah, yeah, in the yeah. industry, yeah. But he's a Twitter guy now, so. Yeah, tw he's yeah, you guys, you know, my good <laughs> friends, these two don't have Twitter. What the heck? He <laughs> was asking, how come we don't follow him on Twitter? Then we are like, we, <laughs> we don't, don't even have, have a Twitter, Twitter account. account. You're so boomer, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. most of Japanese population in a few countries, they mostly use Twitter. You know, the craziest okay. part is, like, as much as Twitter is so big in the States, right? Mm. And... Um, unless you're very Western culture, right? Like Twitter is a big thing. But in Singapore, Twitter just don't have that traction. I just don't know how come, why. But, but maybe I'm giving myself excuses no, for being slow, a boomer. It's true, it's true. Right. Slow to adopt. Uh, we don't like change. Right. <laughs> it's so strange. Like, <laughs> like it, the, the Twitter platform just mm. didn't take flight as big as some of the social Wait, media Wait, I don't platform. even have time to like serve much social media stuff. Uh, There's got so many unique Facebook, be, Instagram, TikTok, way, right? this, 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 and that. I mean, so yeah, many things. Yeah, okay, Twitter is not really social media. It's more like uh, news. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would call it uncensored news, freedom of speech. Like, because let's say if you use uh, Facebook, that kind yeah. of stuff, there'll be certain uh, agendas pushed to you. And it is very, very obvious. Mm -hmm. And certain okay. things will be silenced. Okay. Even, even when you go Google and you search for things, mm -hmm. certain things will just pop up suddenly. Like, why there's this so much uh, news on this? Mm -hmm. It's all like kind of like there, there is this narrative to kind of push the right. I feel so as well to to, to uh. brainwash the normies, you know. Yeah. So Twitter is the only place that you don't get brainwashed. You get equal on both sides, and that is <laughs> that's where I get all my news from anyway. Interesting. Yeah, okay. You should open a Twitter yeah. account. Yeah. yeah. If I open a Twitter so account, boomer. it's just to follow you. No, you, you just to read <laughs> you what you post. Just a real world event <laughs> and stuff, man. 
Speaking okay, of which, uh, yeah, yeah. let's talk about 2023 investment. Yeah, just so we talk about 2023 investments, we spend a short time on this and we will actually spend a longer time on 2024, like what, what to buy and mm. stuff and what we are all yeah, looking I'm, at. Yeah, I'm like very excited to hear from the two of you guys. Okay, let's, let's talk about 2023. Uh, like, uh, so this is my uh, my lesson learned from 2023. It's um, when I was talking about this during the, the hour, the half an hour interview that we had yeah. on my previous video and on my on my YouTube channel. Basically, when the Fed did a uh, U-curve control, stealth, stealth QE or something like that, I, I realized that uh, all my old data, all my old systems where I invest, mm. I threw everything away. I had, to, I had to totally change everything and I built new systems uh, mm. and uh, new data on how do I uh, measure, I mean, how do I go forward from 2023 yeah. onwards. Mm. So that was the highlight for my investments for 2023 and it's doing me very, very, very well. If you follow my Twitter, you know. Oh, well, no. it's not easy. I mean, <laughs> but it's not easy. Like, what made you decide to, you know, change away all your old data and your past beliefs? I mean, you have been investing for many years and mm. a lot of investors mm -hmm. prefer to always stick to their old strategies and mm. carry forward their investment throughout the year. So what made you decide to, you know, review your strategies last time? Um, I will always review my strategy. I will not stick to the same old system over and over again mm. because if you see investors that stick to the same old system over and over again, they usually lose money or don't make <coughs> much. Mm. Yeah, so I'm not in a camp to <coughs> like, I, I always practice like whatever I know today can change tomorrow. Mm. So I, I'm... This, this mental flexibility, I have to change. Because when I'm doing this like 12 hours a day into finance, you kind of feel <coughs> the finance world <coughs> moving like a wave. You are, you are in mm. it, you know. Mm, mm, mm. So it's, it's really interesting because uh, people who don't understand Ken, uh, I mean, I know Ken as a friend. You really spend a lot of time reading about uh, yes. the world news, the macroeconomics and uh, everything. And uh, it's really interesting. And <clears throat> getting first-hand experience from uh, working with you is that um, the macro is, is really important. Micro really why sometimes uh, we will miss the timing. Lah. That's the truth. Lah. Mm. When you sell, when you buy. But <coughs> macro wise is usually how you shape your, your biggest portfolio. Lah. I learned that from you. And also thanks for appearing in my event, man. I mean, like, like, like that was such a big uh, new perspective to how do we look at uh, the world ahead. And uh, for those who haven't watched the video, please go and check it out in uh, uh, Chicken Genius YouTube channel because it's such a good video. I mean, I remember chatting with you just before... Um, going on stage, right? And just realizing that, wow, that's what people really need to hear, a different perspective about what's going to happen to the stock market of uh, tomorrow, mm. right? And, and the, the, the thing is, uh, my views are usually very contarian. Like, 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 if you notice, everything I do is doesn't, mainstream media has not picked up, or people are thinking the opposite. Like when, uh, well, you know, many, many are talking about rockets landing here and there, that kind of stuff. They're like, yeah, right, care what the fuck you're talking about. Oh my God. Yeah. Don't so, talk about that. like, even like, like, even now, I'm pushing a new narrative for together people. It's like, people are like, what, what is this shit, you know? Yeah. But I'm looking like, yeah. second to all the effects, yeah. uh, five years down the road, that kind of thing. Yeah, this is what I'm always can Can at. say that to spite me, lah, the rocket thing because it was the, at this exact place at a different uh, renovation. Yeah, we were sitting like here. I was like, 2019, buy Tesla, bitch. <laughs> then I didn't buy. Mm. So ah, uh, so he's talking about this rocket thing to, to spite me once again. But mm. anyway, yeah. So yeah. that was it, right? So I think yeah. it's really interesting uh, how um, you put it into a perspective. That is your investment for two zero two three, and what yeah. are some of the uh, key milestones for your investment in two zero two three? Key milestones. Um, <laughs> although I tell people, you know, like even from. And 2022. Is it a shift from like um, stocks focus to? Yes, uh, exactly. So this is what you need to do. Like you need to, I actually cashed out like 90% of my money from traditional finance, which is stocks based. Mm, yeah. and, I, and I went into crypto already. Um, I don't, yeah, stocks will rise together with uh, global liquidity, but it, let's say, let's put it this way. I'm in it for life-changing money. It's not like I'm de degen, you know, like I degenerate guy going to go do that kind of gamble. Yeah. Because uh, if you're going to make like 10, 20% a year, I mean, to most people, let's say you put in 10,000, 10% a year is not really going to change a lot of mm. thing. And I always believe in risk to reward. My, that's my fundamental core of everything. If you put in for $1, like you're doing for your shop house too, right? Like the rental of the rent to rent yeah, uh, hotel, yeah. that kind of stuff. 100%. Mm, the risk to reward must be there. I cannot, because I've seen people who invested with 5% a year, stable, that all you need is one year to wipe them out. And, I, and this has always been my practice since day one I've been teaching people and when I started posting my videos on YouTube, it has always been like that. Mm. If I don't see the risk reward, I will not enter. 
hundred percent. I think um, people should spend more time doing uh, due diligence. Yeah, and then enter with full faith, right? Yeah. That means rather than uh, keep asking like, "Oh, is this safe?" You should do your due diligence and know the risk reward ratio. I exactly. Mean, that, that's one thing. Like, yeah. you, you want to be very clear about the risk rather than keep asking a wrong question. Like, "Hey, safe or not? Safe yeah. or not?" So, safe or not? Uh, it was actually very really hard to explain in traditional finance world. So again, I did this on Twitter. I just showed many. Like, they they were like, "What the heck?" Can so I actually post my entire crypto portfolio on Twitter, and I had like ten different. Uh, projects that I invested in. I mean, these projects are, I, I, I do months of research behind each project. And if I have a risk to reward to one to 10, you realize all you need is one. Uh. The nine can go to shit, you know. Mm. Uh, but that one will just clear you all the way through and you'll make life changing money. And <coughs> people can see this real time when I'm doing this. Uh, so, like, I don't know, I don't need to explain to people what is risk reward. You see what happened to my portfolio, you monitor me through 2024, 2025 and you understand why I do not do 5 to 10% a year. That is Very stupid. Interesting. I remember like in doing the COVID and everybody was making like a lot of like uh, investment, like gurus, those sell cost shit. Right? Oh, I made 30% a year doing COVID. I'm like, bitch, I made a thousand percent, you know? Uh, and it changes mm. lives. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so um, very interesting. Why, why we didn't make thousand percent? I never hear thousand percent. <laughs> but, but both oh, of you come from really a great, man. different. You are making like twenty percent of real estate. That is like confirmed shit, you know. Yeah, this is it's totally different it's philosophy. A different ball game I think that's together. what people need to get home as well. Is that if your pot is small, um, Kenny is not wrong. It's mm. a view to think about, so mm. it's not wrong. Is that if your pot is small, you think about something that uh, can really make you a lot as well. Because with ten thousand dollars, if you are making um, five percent a year, right, it's taking you forever to make no money, yeah. Exactly, it's, it's, it's gonna be like this, right? And yeah. the, the thing is, it's a different ball game from real estate to stocks to crypto. Like, for example, in stocks, you would demand a much higher return yep. versus real estate. Mm. But most people are not having that kind of expectations when they go inside the stock and the bond market. They are like. Oh, you know, if I can just exceed real estate just by a little bit, it's fine. You don't do them such stuff. And, and yeah. they think about it by comparing with REITs instead of real estate, actually. Exactly. So and that's worse. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you guys are doing like 20, 30% on, yeah. and, and, and you haven't even like, like, sell yet, you know. I mean, the, the, fact, the fact that you take your time to study something, you have to make 20%, right? Because, you don't call yourself studying something and make 5%. I mean, I mean being honest here. Being, then you uh, might as well put the money with like fixed D. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The fixed D returns are so much higher uh, these anything, days, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so the fact that you, you, you take a study on something, you want to be better. And in fact, uh, I, will, I will argue that when it comes to real estate investment, right, it's actually the same as what your philosophy is, slightly different. So I'll give you an example. So when we have, say, 100,000, right, the goal is not to make 5% from 100,000, right? The goal is to see how can I make it to 200,000 in five to seven years. Mm. Because, yes. because you, you, you can't take a passive income of 100000 to survive. Right? It's yeah. Singapore. I mean, for those who are overseas, it's Singapore. You can't survive with $5,000 right, a year. Mm. I mean, you, you can't, right? So, exactly. So the goal is then to create a big pot from the small pot, right? Mm. Because once you have a big pot, I mean, go ahead, man. Do your, do your dividend, do your whatever uh, nonsense yeah. later, no problem, right? But it's still the same goal. It's just at a slower trajectory, I would say. Like, I mean, it's way slower trajectory, but it's, embracing um, leverage. Uh, that's, that's what we do. Yeah. It's, it's not slow, man, what you guys do. It's not I slow. Mean, For real estate, I'm telling you, it's fast. My real estate game is shit. You are like on another level. No, no, but yeah, compared so, to um, uh, crypto, it's, it's, it's nowhere near. crypto yeah. game is like yeah. thousands. Yeah. Different, that, that's a different, this is a different ball game again. Different yeah. risk appetite, mm. you know. Awesome. Yeah. Chewy, yeah. how's your 2023 for you? Investment? Um, okay, I am a little bit guilty of like uh, not putting in much effort in looking after my investment portfolio this year, to why, be honest. Why, 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 but I'm like really so busy with work and uh, have been spending so much time traveling around. I think the only thing I invested in this year is our Bali Villa. That ah. is all. The rest of my investment is just, how should I say, uh, there and uh -huh. dormant and you know, mm. servicing itself. Mm. I mean, the rental is covering the mortgage and it's just self-servicing itself. So I didn't do anything at all. I didn't buy anything, neither did I sell anything except for the Bali Villa. Okay, guys, this so, is Chewy yeah. being Chewy being humble again. Benny, tell me how much she made. Like, just no, so, I think, I think, the beauty of what the, she does. The, the she does nothing and make a lot yeah. of money. So the, the, the thing about busy people, like I think I'll assume me and her as well, right? I mean, Ken travels so much and having so much fun in a relaxed life, but, but people yeah. like us who are hard workers, right? Yeah. That 
why we're in real estate is purely because it, it grows by itself. Like. I, I dare to argue that just in 2023 alone, because you didn't see your portfolio, you probably actualize this two years about half, uh, half, half an M. Uh. Yeah, because, because half a million doing nothing, what the I shit? Mean, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, like, within uh, last two years. <laughs> see, I mean, she doesn't even, she doesn't even know your portfolio. She doesn't even know how to calculate how much money she okay, made. Wait, oh my wait, freaking wait, God. Wait, wait. I guess that's the thing about real estate. Yeah. Because you buy, you don't do anything. You don't have to it's keep monitoring enough. the ups and the downs. Mm -hmm. So... I did more of the buying moves in uh, 2022 mm -hmm. and in 2023 it was a year of me not doing much no, I, I so, didn't do anything yeah, I made half a I million really yeah, okay okay, okay. No, but, but it's a very big lesson that uh, people, should, people should take away from which is very powerful because although she did some lessons uh, some actions in earlier years mm. but she's very forward thinking because if she know that she don't do any action this year, right, it affects three years now. Yeah. Mm. Right, right. So yes. she's already thinking ahead because those are done to her. I know how she thinks. And, and, <laughs> and, and when, when it's done, it's almost like it, it should grow by itself, right? But, you are like the but, little thing yeah, on my shoulder. The, 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 you know how I think. No, I, I, because we're all real estate investors so, so yeah. it's just fundamentally if this year you don't do a move you'll feel the pain like yeah. in three, four years time because mm -hmm. there, there will be a blank year where, yeah. Yeah. where you're not, we're not uh, getting anything yeah. so, so I, I hear you like, why you are still in that but anyway this year you did a good move I think the Bali Villa when you calculate it as a business and it's really good uh, and in uh, five years we, we you know whatever it is actually uh, talking about the Bali double, Villa uh, yeah. I already know we at least made a, uh, about maybe a hundred thousand in capital See? appreciation mm -hmm. already Never based be. on what we did yeah. right so that was our <laughs> Bali Villa. Okay. Uh, back to like what Benny mentioned. Actually, he 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 said something quite interesting. It, I think since years ago, I already have this idea. Every year, I must make at least some property move. Yeah. But of course, some years, there will be more than the others. But some years, it's like this year, it's yeah. not. It's mm. just one move. So, but the idea of it is that because uh, if every year for me, every year I do a property move, I know that it's it will come a time whereby I always have a cycle of whether I want to buy, sell and then I can cash out certain yeah. properties and make certain other moves moving forward. Yeah. Right. So next year, what's your move? Next year, mm. what's my move? Uh, I have two properties to sell next year. Uh, okay, two properties to sell. Yeah, see, see, are, are you going to, to buy another property? You see what I mean, right? So when you do a move, four years later it pay off right? Mm. because then you start selling so there will be a gap year for yeah. her now and uh, that, that, uh. That, that the properties I'm selling next year is the property that I bought maybe like I think about three to four years yeah. ago so there will be a gap so, year for yeah. her but oh. she will feel that, that dry because then you, what you, what, I mean so you sell what are you going to buy Tell me, uh. That's the, the question I need to ask you later, right? What to buy in 2024? Oh, I, I uh, okay, okay. okay. So you want to hear my investment ideas yes. for 2024 or Benny should go first? Benny, go first. Uh. Benny, yeah, you, go, you should go first. I, I think I can talk about my 2023 first. Uh, oh, you should, oh, you should, yeah, 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 yeah. 2023, yeah. Uh, 2023 is an interesting year because I, I took real estate to an uh, entrepreneurial level uh, mm. as you all heard about my, my, my business so I decided to add a layer of uh, entrepreneurship to an uh, asset class that to me is relatively safe uh. so because mm. you can do based research on uh, occupancy rate and stuff like that by sprucing a little bit of our uh, entrepreneurship ideas right? you should actually do better so that was me main focus was creating value in the hotel chain and also going to uh, Bali to look at development sites. Huh? So mm. it's very entrepreneurial. It's very strange. But this, this pays off long term because you, we want to look at moves that have that kind of returns, right? And mm. if, you, if it's done properly, not buying property, but building businesses around real estate, right? You do well. Lah. So my real estate portfolio trijax at about 33% a year. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So I think that's very healthy. And, um, 33% a year is a lot, bro. I, I, I For real estate, think come on. It is, it is. It's, it's, it's very, very comfortable. So, mm. so it's a, that's why I say it's a very different uh, flow mm. versus um, how we invest in stocks or crypto mm. portfolio. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, different yeah, yeah. asset class altogether. Yeah, yeah. I want to also share with you guys, like, although like in this year 2023, <coughs> I didn't do much. I had some hiccups with, with my real estate investment. Mm. Uh, what, what happened? So, um, one of my investment, right, I think I mentioned before, I bought into a Cambodia property, right? A property okay, in Cambodia. Okay, so, yeah, okay. want to hear what happened? Okay, what this happened. One, uh, so, by right, this property is supposed to pay me like a quarterly fixed return mm. of 5%. Okay, mm. A, don't laugh at my 5% because mm. last time to me, 5% was a lot, a lot right? Yeah, yeah. right? So, they are supposed <laughs> to pay me like consistently 5%, mm. uh, oh, sorry, 5% per year mm. and pay out every quarter and guess what? This year, I just received a notice of, e uh, email notice, mm. right? And they say that they cannot pay out. Yeah. And then they asked me to wait for one year before mm. the next payment. Okay, tell what happened. It's not going to come. Because oh once they, they get in the habit of not paying, they exactly, will not pay. which is like what the. So guys, you see, you risk so much for five percent consistency, 
to like wow, five 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 percent. Mm. It never pays. Sorry, it it's gone. Yeah, no, I mean no, those, those, those are uh, pre. I, I call those are pre-educated chewy la. Those are the investment. pre-educated chewy days yeah. on real estate, yeah. right? It's alright. We and, made the mistake. And, and the right key now. thing to learn is never freaking buy into guaranteed return scheme. Of course, yes. never. Because if they give you ten years time five percent, they pretty much mark up your real estate to pay you back. So you are like an automated bank account for them. Mm. They squander yeah. money from you with a over price well, price and just pay you back every month. Mistake so. made like many but years ago. Way back lah, mm. way back. Yeah. But you know it was a mistake made years ago. But I was still thinking, okay, you know, you know what? At least they are paying me the five percent every year until they I freaking receive that email. I'm yeah. like, what the hell? And I replied them. They don't mm. reply anymore. Of course. So that's it's, it. It's, it's not. It's not gonna come. You, you Years ago, t- can talk about the, the idea of certainty that actually can kill people, right? Yes. So this is the fact when you talk about real estate investment. Everybody keep overly focused on the safe part and they actually perverse the function of investing, which is growing your wealth, right? Mm. So schemes like this become very attractive over the mm. years in Japan, in Cambodia, in Thailand, right? But fundamentally, it's totally screwed because fundamentally, the real estate is not backed by market price is not selling at a price where you can exit, right? Mm. Then you're gone. So be careful about getting into uh, schemes. Uh. Very yeah. dangerous. Yeah. And this year also, I, I it's the first time in my like real estate investment years, <coughs> I actually <coughs> faced an issue with my one of my tenants. He didn't pay up for three freaking months. You know, your bank account is so big, you don't know, right? I didn't realize it until I needed to log into the bank account to pay for the uh, quarterly uh, the, management fee. Oh. Then I realized, hey, how come the money is just not getting higher? It's like reducing. Then I realized the tenant three months never pay me rental. You rich people problem because you don't even know like for three months, you don't even know because money not the, coming in. The, the property is self-servicing, you know, by right, the mm. rental mm. is supposed to cover the mortgage and mm-hmm. all the mm-hmm. respective fees and mm-hmm. automatically yeah. deduct mm-hmm. and I don't need to do any anything mm. until that so until that. three months later I found out but of course after contacting them they did pay out but that mm. was some of the things I I, mm. I faced for being too passive with my investment mm. Yeah. Mm. I think you still had to watch over it like everything mm. is, like, there's, there's just no absolute passiveness in everything mm. I mean real estate is really as passive as you can get but you still need to watch if over you it. want yeah. to be really passive like me like don't really care uh, like in for UK I have like letting agents to yeah. help me manage everything so only any issues come up they, they, yeah, they come same. so like UK you, also you could do that yeah, using, using all my UK portfolio uh, UK I, I did that as well yeah so you don't need to worry about anything yeah yeah, yeah. Handle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's th- me. Mm. I think that's 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 the price of um. Th- that's a, there's always a price of making returns, right? Mm. It's either the the sharpness of focus, the the consistency of monitoring the market, or the idea of like making sure you manage your real estate well. But but people cannot assume that investment is totally armchair to a point whereby um, you're doing nothing, and that's why you get armchair returns of three four percent. I think the the word passive mm. investing is uh overused. It Bullshit. is. Yeah, it like, is. There's nothing passive. There's nothing passive. I mean, come on, like stocks. You also need to spend so much time and effort, yeah. like reading up news. You know, when I travel with Ken, every morning he wakes up like seven a.m. diligently. He start reading his news. Here, listen to his podcast, do his exercise. Everything you know, he spent hours every day yeah. to read out on his investment. Is it is not like a prediction. So it's nothing is passive. Yeah, remember that. Huh? Let's jump straight into 2024 investment ideas. And this is what people are here about. What are we doing personally? Not just advice that we are not doing. Huh? So what are we personally uh, interested, invested to do in 2024? Mr. Chicken Genius. <laughs> yes, tell me, tell me, tell me. Are you going to invest together with me? If uh, I tell you. Okay. Yes, sure, yes, yes, sure, yes, I will. Okay. I already committed. Because <laughs> <laughs> I missed the rocket. So no, I'm, I'm committed. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I am all years right now. Okay, all what, years. what am I going to do is I'm going to give you the safest investment I can think of right now. <laughs> safest. Safest. is like, like boomer shit. The safest. And to the most high risk, high... Uh, no, not high risk. It's the best risk to reward that, that is, uh, mm. I could think of. Um, but of course, don't risk all your money now. I yeah. kind of don't risk all your money uh, but, but I'll, high reward. I'll, but I'll give you a, like a rough ratio okay, oh, okay. Late, later. Wow, oh, not bad even ratio. Huh? Yeah, mm. a rough ratio. So the, good I'll start with the safest of safest and a lot of people would start to uh, like, like this thing I'm going to say because I've been shitting on this stock forever is this stock called Alibaba. <gasps> Baba. I mean, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> not, not Baba altcoin or something. Wait. No, Baba. Baba stock. Tra- traditional finance Alibaba.com. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. the, the one that you... 
You just slap shift, left, right, center like, for. Yeah, the, 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 the shift. Wait, wait, wait. The, this is the A- Alibaba. Yes, Alibaba. <laughs> Jack Ma Alibaba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. This, this, is, this is this is this is. What I I've been shitting on this stock for the last like two three years. However, and I made a lot of enemies doing that. I know. You see the amount of channels shitting on me. Is it time for you to make new friends right now? I, I don't care. I don't want to be also. <laughs> you see, I I do not want to be associated with these boomers who use spreadsheets to calculate Alibaba. These guys has been in Alibaba since two hundred dollars, and now it. Bottom up yeah. a few days ago at sixty nine dollars. Sixty nine dollars. Oh my oh god! My you hit gosh. the magic number. Yeah, magic. Magic yeah. number. Essentially, yeah. everything reaches sixty nine. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, <laughs> so why? Um, okay, so I actually po- t- told people on my Twitter, which you guys don't use, that uh, <laughs> that the bottom of uh, China stocks were in, and I, I actually talked about the reasons why where China has been pumping money for the last uh, six months. Yeah. Eventually, this money will flow into the economy. Mm. And also, the amount of risk takers in Chinese stocks is at what is lower. So if you if you can plot out this graph, you realize that the the risk levels for Chinese stocks were at its lowest possible. Mm-hmm. And that day, I shoot that tweet out like the it's a mean revision trade. So mean revision trade meaning that is trend flowing trade. So means you write the trend upwards. Mean yeah. revision means you buy and you hopefully it goes up. Yeah. And I was quite lucky. I mean, I I don't time or my timing is not exactly right all the time. But this time it's. <laughs> on the ball, wow! Shooting up, yeah. I know. Woo-hoo. Yeah. So okay, l- okay. Let me give you the 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 thesis for this Alibaba thing. And this this thesis is not some boomer spreadsheet thing, you know. It I, I don't okay, believe no, no, no. I, I I need I need to rewire myself because yeah. I have not looked at Baba at all. So <laughs> what what's up with Baba now? Yeah. All right. So uh, so this is what I have. Um, for Baba. Okay. So basically, I'm gonna front run all these Wall Street monkeys. You know. Uh, <laughs> That they've been buying Baba now, and now it's quite bearish on Baba. So what happened is other than the liquidity injections from um, China mm-hmm. governments and stuff, one thing you notice is that nobody is pricing in a U.S.-China relationship getting better. Mm. Mm. And you have seen that when uh, then they realize at, at this stage they need each other. Xi Jinping made the move to San Francisco and, and you know they cleaned up the streets there. Some of like the intangible things that people don't yeah, they, look at, cannot measure. Yeah, you don't measure this bloody shit on the spreadsheet. You how you spreadsheet Xi Jinping landing in, 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 in San Francisco uh, anyway. So uh, the next thing is uh, US has a lot of regulations with the silicon chips coming into yeah. into um, China, right? So one thing is uh, I my belief is the Alibaba has the biggest AI cloud infrastructure available and that will drive massive revenue to Alibaba. And now that's why I say so so these few factors of narrative uh, government printing money I don't I do not bet against governments printing yeah. money. You don't do it as stupid shit. Mm-hmm. Right. So on top of all the valuations you can ask the boomers uh, you can ask Ivan <laughs> Ivan he does Alibaba right very investing shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can ask all these boomers to calculate why is it yes. worth it. They can answer that for you but they cannot answer the intangibles like the narrative the drivers behind the price and yeah so Alibaba is a very nice safe investment right now. Wow. Mm. Okay, okay, I need to read that. Need to. Okay. But anyway, all these are investment opinion and action that we're doing. Yeah. These are not proper financial advices. Please mm-hmm. um, do think, your own duty. Yeah, a, more important. Yeah, okay. it's good to take some time to read up uh, on it. I mean, since you brought this up. Yeah, yeah just read out everyone the should US. read out a little bit. I think nothing to read out. Okay. Uh, so China safest, printing money. Uh, safest. Uh. safest yeah. so what is your safest thing you will do in 2024 yeah, yeah. before we go extreme? Uh. Yeah. Safest? Hmm. Uh, I don't really have a, a 2024 investment advice for anybody. I only know what I'm going to do for myself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> you see, that, that, that's her all the time. Oh, I, I don't know do much, but she makes a lot of money <laughs> at the end of the day. What the heck? <laughs> I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think I will advise anybody, but for me, it's, uh, I have two properties on hand to sell next year and uh, planning to sell them off. Uh, and it's a very simple move. Just get an agent to help me find the right price mm. and then we just uh, remove the property from my hands and yeah, where you get gonna, the money. Where are you going to put the money? No, it's okay. Uh, she yeah. doesn't know where. It's fine. Just follow me. Uh, yes, I'm waiting for him to tell me like wow, the, wow, wow, wow. You the high, know, the high, the high risk. risk. I will make you buy the high risk. Ah, okay. yeah. <laughs> for so me, yeah. safe first. Yeah, what's the safe, safe first? Yeah. If you have liquidity, mm. if you have cash, mm. so, uh, for me, mm. not advice, but my, what I'm doing, mm. I'm going to buy into high yield tourism asset. 
Huh? Mm. Yeah, so I will buy more into Bali, 100%. Oh, okay, okay, 100%. okay. But you got to buy by really owning the land. Mm. Mm. Don't buy into investment scheme. Yes, yep. 99% mm. of people are selling scheme, yeah. not land. Yes. We, we bought into a land. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I'm going to hammer that because it's going to keep producing 20%, 15, 20%. It's gonna still see slight capital appreciation, and that doubles my money in five years. So to mm. me, safe. Mm. You don't want to care about market. You want to care about 75, 80 percent occupancy rate purely by Booking.com and Airbnb. Mm. Feed by itself. Create a normal villa. Nothing mm. unique. Nothing special. Put your money there. That's what I'm gonna 100 percent do. So mm. to me, if I were to use the safe energy in real estate, would be buying into a villa. Yeah, especially mm. we went in now and we, we know what are the yeah. issues, how yeah, you can solve yeah. it, the legal side and Definitely the construction the, side. Definitely the yeah. second round, third round will be much faster it, and more it, it, efficient. See, we already see, got the, the right the, network the, the, people the thing to do is, things. People need to understand that's the price you pay for high yield because the knowledge gap is there. Mm. If everybody is doing it, the yield will be 4%. Yeah. Is, is that the knowledge gap is the price. That means you have to figure out, you got to meet good lawyers. Like you just mm. have to do that process. When everybody figure out for you, that's it. You, you, they, they sell you they nine, nine percent, like seven percent uh, returns, right? Earn they, money you are through the whole fourth process. Hand. Yeah, you're already fourth hand. Your yeah, investment scheme. You're not buying the land, right? So that's what I'm gonna do for safe. Okay. Yeah, safe, may, uh. I think maybe you hey, could invite wait, some. Wait, wait, wait. Your safe is how many percent per year? About 15, 15 20 percent. Mm, that's not uh, too bad. That's pretty good. Safe is fifteen. No, because yeah. anybody. I, I don't think it's come out fifteen. I'm, I'm, I think it's more than that. I but think it's more, but it's always good. I always like to use pessimistic return. But the truth is. If anybody is advising you a 5% return, why, why, why need to hear that advice? Actually, 5% return is risky. If you hear a 5% Come return, just, just walk away, bro. Just, just Remember walk, my walk 5% away. Cambodia you just, example. You just, you just so 5% is risky. Well, why because do you need to hear any exactly. comment? Your 5% mm. go to the government bonds. Mm. The government, like, so, I mean, so shall you be so brutal? But it's really like that. If it's, be brutal, if, bro. If it's 5%, then stupid people why, need why, to know. Why do you need to read an hour of analysis for a 5% uh, 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 outcome and then say be safe and then I, it doesn't make sense I for mean put it this way 5% is really risky take my take myself uh, as an example mm. my Cambodia property 5% do no shit but you see what happened you don't have any control of the investment I don't have the control of the if investment in my hands you get 5% you are stupid yeah and if you are investing in something getting 5% probably is because <laughs> you are not having that right knowledge you are not investing enough time to have that knowledge to invest right and you are living up to other people to decide it for you and this itself is risky. I feel so, so. yeah, Good. don't All do right, that. Yeah. So. so let's move on. 2024, let's go, man. Moonshot. Okay, this... I'm waiting for that. Okay, this is my moonshot. Okay. Basically, what I'm saying is... Um, let me say, how... How are you going to put it? <laughs> how am I going to put it, man? Okay, let's say... Uh, let's, let's talk about portfolio allocation. Because mm -hmm. I've done my research on this, I've done months and months of research in front of my computer. I, I do it all the time. Um, let's say I have a 5 million portfolio. Okay, I, I will put... I'm putting 100%. 1 million in. I'm putting 1 million in. It's huge allocation. It's like uh, 20%. Yeah. Uh, okay, the thing is, if I lose my 1 million, fine. I'm still, I still got 4 million, 3 million. I still comfortable Enough, in my life. In but it, but I've taken so much research into this project that I, I need to at least put a million. That's, that's, that's kind of, like if I lose it all, so fine. It uh, hurts, I, would, I would say, mm. so you're using the word it hurts now, right? It means it's considered a big move for you. It's a big move It's a me. big move, huh? It's a big yeah, move. So, and, and, and that's speaking, because it's not about just quantum of money, it's about percentage, right? It's quite yes. a sizable portfolio. Yes, right? exactly. Uh, wow. Especially in crypto uh, terms, this is uh, quite a huge... It is, eh? It is quite a huge uh, move, but... Wait, uh, wait, wait, it's on crypto. You haven't reviewed... Yeah, and, and it's crypto some more. And it's not just like crypto, like Bitcoin, Ethereum. So because I, say, I say to everybody first, because it's such a big personal move by Ken, it's an opinion conversation, you really need to do your own duty, yeah? Huh? Yeah, don't, yeah, don't. Uh, please, can, please. when, buy, when, sell, come on, I'll give you the middle finger, all right? Yeah, you yeah, you yeah, really need to do your own research. Order, but yeah. it's just, mm. we just want to be more mm. open about what we're going to do for 2024, okay? Can, yeah. Okay, can. So, uh, so what I, so in crypto world, the lowest beta moving asset, means the lowest volatility asset is obviously Bitcoin. Mm. And I know that uh, from my past talks, you all hear that 2024, it, and it's going to be a freaking bull run because there'll be a lot of money being printed in 2024. I'm not kidding you. There's a lot of money being printed in 2024. I show you some charts which are only available to institution investors. I cannot show retail investors, right? Uh, because I signed some NDA shit. Yeah. So I know 2024 is going to be a big bull run. Uh, and you asked me to buy Bitcoin and 3X in the biggest bull run. That's 300%. I know for tra traditional finance bros, they'll be like, wow, 300%. To me, it's nothing. I'm not looking for 300%. 
I'm looking for like a minimum of a thousand percent to ten thousand percent. That is the kind of uh, returns I'm looking for, and that kind of vision. Let, let's say, for example, Ethereum started at what, the thirty cents. Now it's a few thousand dollars. That is like a uh, ten thousand x, ten thousand thousand dollar x. Um, and basically, to me, I think I'm looking at Ethereum two point zero means the the next one, yeah. which, which is um. Ethereum is smart contracts, this is smart contracts 2.0. But basically what I'm trying to talk about is uh, where the big guns are talking about it. And I did tweet this on my Twitter again. Oh, so it's out uh, It's one of my, on my highlight, highlighted threads. Okay, so it's I, actually out. We are, yes, we are not even getting the latest news. Yeah, because you're not getting the latest news. we are not news. updated. We are, don't have Twitter. Okay, okay, Twitter, but the don't be a boomer. Okay, <laughs> so um, I actually outlined my thesis behind uh, AI agents where... Oh. Eventually, everything on your smartphone, will, you don't really have apps. You just talk to an agent and the agent will help you do a lot of things. Like, uh, for example, remember, uh, you didn't watch, but OpenAI came out with a developer conference recently. And people are like, you know, now they create apps by speaking to the AI. They ask the AI to, can I create an app for finance? And because this is this. this. Mm-hmm. They will create an app for you straight away. The AI does an app for you. You don't need app developers anymore. Yeah. So the eventual outcome is apps. Uh, you don't have apps anymore. You just have AI agents. That they are, These agents are, spe- are specialists. Okay, how I describe specialists is, let's say, Benny, you are founder mm. of this, uh, this, this uh, real estate company yeah. with so many employees, right? Mm. So every employee got their own specialty. And yeah. these employees are agents themselves. Mm-hmm. You, so you don't have a one specialty, like one, one agent. You don't have one AI for all. Yeah. Generalized AIs are not really useful. But specialized... Uh, AIs, like, we call them agents, they are very useful. So if, for example, imagine you have an AI agent that does your finance for you. Yeah. Yeah, so it will just tell you everything you do for your finance. You will keep track on you. Something goes wrong, will handle for you. But what if currently there are these kind of agents deployed on the open web and the proof of concept is being yeah. done. There are uh, prediction agents that are already having 90% accuracy. So, so to sum up my complex words to, to very simple words, you need to go and research about artificial intelligent agents out there. And actually, Bill Gates did have a long article talking about artificial intelligent agents out there. He's just, just a simple understanding behind it. And if you push that forward, how does this AI work, AI agents work yeah. best? Is they, they must work best with crypto. It's the best synergy ever. Again, why, why best synergy? Sometimes, let's say for your finance, do you want... Facebook or Google to know every single thing you do about finance it no. is you, yeah. nobody wants to do that like, I mean they a, have uh, records of leakage of yeah, private information Google, Google is, is, is so CIA own yeah anyway the general trend which is most people already hating that which is AI yes and you're now saying uh, I'm going to this scene uh, please uh, to be so sure. you're saying AI crypto AI crypto uh, okay that's, that's nine, AI crypto yes 99% of AI crypto is is is, is not working or is a chat GPT rapper so they I, I, yeah. don't, I, I yeah. don't explain yeah. that yeah, yeah. 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 so uh, self-explanatory so, so you, you need a real AI project ongoing out there and this this so you're this investing in a uh, AI agent project uh, uh, AI agent project which, faci- which facilitates um, decentralization hmm. um, yeah so this is the main gist of it I do not if people want to know more information, they can go to my Twitter and look at my highlight threads. That's where I, I talk about it and wow. give certain examples. I mean, of course, um, we, we, I was hearing from this uh, sharing by one of the US influencers as well, mm-hmm. right, in a hedge fund. He was just saying that you want to be in an environment where you experience a uh, 100% growth year on year or 1,000% growth year on year. So mm-hmm. back then, the internet was growing at a thousand percent year on year. That mm-hmm. was like 20, 30 years ago, right? Yes. And everything that is on the internet is going to really scale, right? Yeah. And those companies really boom. La. And, and just even removing the crypto layer first, I think everybody can tell that AI is not going anywhere. And mm. it, the, the, the AI scene is going to keep growing at a thousand X, right? In the next few years to come. La. So exactly. I, I, I do concur that if there's a space to invest for me in the AI world, right? I'll be quite excited. I think this mm. is a space. Okay, maybe I can also say another way where people can understand. Um, what creates value in this world is labor, your, your time and your effort yeah. in doing things. And we know that a lot of labor is going towards mm. AI. Mm. Yeah. So it's not the AI program that earns the money, it's the services it provides that it makes that captures the value. So uh, if, if these uh, uh, agents are the ones that uh, captures like labor, you know, the value of labor, these AI agents mm. will capture the value of labor itself. You want to own part of it. You want to have a say in part of it. 
And this is where this project comes in. And it's not just some random shit. It's a team that's proven from another project. They come to this project and they have PhDs behind this from Cambridge and kind of stuff. So it's not some... Uh, this, is, this is my own, my own research. <coughs> Again, if I lose my million, so be it. But <coughs> I'm at a stage where I cannot not take risks for this. Mm. Yeah. And if it works out, I'm happy for a lot of people that will uh, go along with this. You know, if it doesn't work out, I apologize. But this, I will, I will still come out and find new projects. That you know, will the, always the, provide the interesting part of what you're saying is quite, it, it's almost like real estate. Maybe I share a bit more hmm. technically. So in real estate, right? If you know that your property uh, have very strong value, like in Singapore, mm. in major city, in Manchester, in London, you know, in major hubs like, you know, Bali tourism, not mm. in like Lombok or not in like Bandung, but like mm. major, major, like, like well-known hubs, right? You know that there will always be value, right? So mm. when we buy into real estate, say we take 75% leverage loan, mm -hmm. we know that of certain in Singapore, I know for personally that you will not drop 25%. Because the moment real estate price drop 25%, Ken will tomorrow come out and say, let's all go and buy. Because there we go. <laughs> you'll be the biggest, you'll be yeah. the biggest uh, uh, 100x, right? I mean, uh, in yeah. no time, right? So because of that, you are always uh, risking your uh, down payment. Mm. Because you can anytime sell off and you can pay off your debt, right? So yes. your down payment. So what you're saying is quite interesting because you got 5 million, mm. you're risking 1 million. So it's as good as risking 20% uh, of your full pot size. Yes. Mm. Like any mm. fundamental real estate uh, safety net is. Uh, mm. In a very safe country, you're risking. So I, I, now that when you speak and I think about it, it might not sound as risky as I thought. Uh, but mm. maybe the, the, the thought of me being outside of crypto to think about putting seven figure on a uh, on, on crypto, on crypto right sounds that sounds scary. a bit uh, scary for me uh. yeah so I, I understand that yeah. so for me uh, two so more things to, to talk about for uh, you want to oh, yeah yeah you was your twenty oh, yeah. you want to talk about twenty twenty four I want to yeah. know your twenty twenty four ideas so yeah. that's one that I talked about earlier which is my Bali safe big mm. cash. Number two, high risk bro high risk number two right the latest policy just came out from Singapore I haven't done my full research but it used to be six occupancy in Singapore mm -hmm. when you can run out home mm -hmm. now it increased to eight. What? For some uh, units that are like uh, bigger, like 90 square meter and above. Exactly. Yeah. And that's a scary thing. Because with it, it means... Huh? I get it. Okay, continue. continue. <laughs> okay, I want to hear what, what do you think. Okay, <laughs> yeah. okay. very good. Okay, well, Singapore is the very most competitive country in the world. So I think with it, the rental yield goes up. Then because the rental yield goes up, the capital goes yeah. up more. Is that right? So 100% no depressive market in Singapore. Because when people can make uh, 2,000 bucks more, interest rate is irrelevant. So what if it's 5% interest rate? It is no longer relevant anymore because you are literally renting out to two more tenants, right? So, so when are these rules kicking? Uh, January. January will be yeah. fully in place. So, mm. so it's so crazy, this news, because this is supposed to slow down uh, rental price. <laughs> the policymaker says, right? But I think it's got to totally backfire for what a policymaker uh, rule is, right? Not because of um, increasing rental price, but it will be uh, increasing our capital appreciation because you can, there's a core relation between capital appreciation versus rental you, right? Mm. There's a core relation. When you buy a property, mm. you ask yourself, can you pay off the debt, right? So mm. this news supposed to be cooling rental, <laughs> but it might heating up uh, Wait, capital appreciation. So, yeah. I mean, in my opinion, is that it probably does help to cool down the rental because imagine right now as a tenant as a tenant, right? I, instead of going into a apartment and I rent a room, <laughs> that is fitting, say, six people in the house, but now I'm renting an apartment that is fitting eight people. So probably the rental for the tenant might go down. However, for the landlord perspective, now that you're renting out to more people, you can rent out more people, your monthly revenue coming in from the rental is the, higher the, than before. The on-the-ground outcome will only be couple sharing room and landlord are okay with couple sharing, that's all. Mm -hmm. There's no change. So, so, so rental will not drop. Because first of all, 50% of the supply will probably cannot add another room. So it doesn't change. Because you, you had to like do partition and room. Secondly, uh, the other 50% is just like, oh, you pay more? Lo? I can allow your, uh, now I can allow your boyfriend to sleep with you. That's all. So literally, the rent is going to go up. So the, only the sharing one. So the sharing one. The sharing, the, the attached people will feel a bit happy. That's all. I mean, that's how I see it. On the ground, because you must understand there's a, always a, you know, like how, Liquidity as well. By the time the money touch the ground, it's a very different case. So by the time this policy touch the ground, right, the, the, the net impact is actually different from it. So to me, big units, and this is my uh, not full prediction, the even bigger units are the like landed property might start to see a shift again. So so like as hmm? a as a tenant, as a tenant, right? The hmm. 
right now couple can stay together and they mm. probably just need to top up a little bit just for the same room because now two person are staying inside so to them actually their rental per month expenses yeah. out is lower than before which is which is still good for the rental right? it's, still, it's still good for rental market yeah. but I'm just saying the ground net impact is actually way more minuscule than adding mm. 25% of because uh, 6 to 8 so will add 25% of uh, rooms yeah. available right? Yeah. you'll you, you be adding maybe like 10% of room available mm. Mm. That, that's the net ground impact and landed market right we'll see is very exciting game because now you almost have a hotel right? <laughs> so you got a landed house you can split to eight rooms right right oh. i mean you, you almost have a long term long term play right it's, it's totally different game right now which is very very exciting next uh so next is also the co-living space will boom mm. <coughs> remember i thought about four to five mm-hmm. mm. so if you find the right layout of building in mm-hmm. singapore mm-hmm. <coughs> you might be risking four to seven. Oh. So every four dollars, mm. you might make seven. Make seven. seven. So I suddenly, see. you still can't beat my Vietnam uh, 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 assets, right? Yeah. Or my Bali assets, but the co-living market will boom. But knowing that Singapore is a very competitive market, like I say it's the most competitive, mm. so uh, the gap will close in. Yeah, very fast, very fast. It will cl- close in very quickly. In a quarter time, um, everything will actualize. Uh. In Singapore, all um, uh, hungry uh, hustle folks. Uh, so yeah. a quarter or two, it's going to close up. But the stability of co-living market will then survive too because uh, definitely there's some tough time going right now. I'm not mm. a big proponent yep. of co-living. Mm. I'm just saying high risk mm. but high move because risking four makes seven mm. equals to you having not a lot of money down but you can make quite a bit of income. It's some of the city two, of Singapore. Yeah, in 2024. So I'm still saying it's a higher risk move than, than Bali because you are now risking taking one or two years or three years of tenancy contract, right? Mm. But it's going to be way, way safer now. Right? Mm. And it's got to way more income. So mm. not like moon level, but we talk about ratio of money into making money, right? I think that market will boom. Not, I will never touch co-living, but I think it will boom. If I were to choose based on uh, what you uh, shared, I would still go for the Bali Villa. Just, you All know. right, high five, man. <laughs> I don't want to manage so many <laughs> No, I, 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 don't, I don't want, but you must yeah, understand, I, I cannot speak for myself. Mm. I must speak for someone who is like 24 years yeah. old in Singapore mm-hmm. and all he have is time yeah. mm-hmm. all he has is time mm-hmm. he hustle his way to, to make more money I think what uh, it, it is also good for people let's say if you are staying in a house and there's a few people staying in the house and right now with this new law you can have two more people living in the house you guys if as a living household you want to have additional like pocket money for the household, then might as well. It's okay now. You can cut out a little room I mean, to rent out to two yeah, person. To be highly, I think highly localized cool. might not be available yeah. for US uh, our outside audience, right? Like you know the masonic homes, mm-hmm. the two level with two doors, yeah, right. Oh, yeah. So you can literally just break one door to uh, like five rooms. Yeah, because in the past, probably <laughs> yeah. their household number would already have hit he six hit the, people, hit right? So, so now with this additional two more, they can just cut a little room, rent yeah, out for additional that. money. Yeah. And so from I go get from this con- conversation, housing price will go up again. It's easy. That maybe I'll just be more conservative that it won't go down. Yeah, it <laughs> won't go I, down. I keep telling people it won't go down, but everybody was just uh, doing this. You know, like general people speak general language to be safe so they don't get hit, right? Mm-hmm. So everybody's like, oh, it's going to go down, it's going to go down, it's going to mm, go down because no. the, the market likes to hear that it's going down. If you ask ChatGPT today, mm. it's going down. You know, next year the interest rates are going to drop. Mm. Like, yeah, yeah. The, the whole world thinks, thinks it doesn't. I would say it's going to be lower for longer, not zero. Uh, the, the, yeah. the zero interest rates are no more there I was watching one of our first few episodes on Cafe Money and you talk about uh, one. You you during COVID you got less than 1% uh, something 1 like point something 1 point something 1.06 yeah 1 point zero. Percent, that, that was yeah. lame you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so let's talk about even if there's a chance for 2025 interest rate to be dropping not 4 right? mm-hmm. so everything is only priming for real estate market to stay so here's my plan like I say to you <coughs> if a young <coughs> be very active to seek out the co-living co, co space. I think it's high risk in real estate play to, to, to talk about it. It's not as safe, but you know what? I mean, we are now talking about shooting to the moon idea, but you yeah. can make absolute money without a lot, lot of money. That's a game that I would never touch personally, right? Mm. Because I would rather focus my money building hotels and having business equity, mm. and I can 10x selling as a business portfolio. So, so this is considered very safe for people who want to take the safe route Singapore and they still make good amount of money, right? Yeah. So that, that's one choice. Or you can go to the extreme high risk to reward AI agents. <laughs> All right. 1,000 X, bro. Wrapping up. <laughs> the most important question I need to ask, and I'm so excited that this is such a long episode of today, right? But are we going to do cafe money <laughs> in 2024? 
Yeah, but it, bro, it's so hard to like, like it's so hard to. <laughs> I, I, how? <laughs> oh my god! We'll see about it. Yeah, Just wrapping up a very poorly run season two of Cafe Money this year with three episodes. We are so ill disciplined. <laughs> three like, episodes one year, of a podcast. Three episodes. Well, this, this, this is the most yeah. film. <laughs> Last but not least, we want to wish everybody a very good, happy holidays, mm. Merry Christmas, have a good twenty twenty four, Happy yes. New Year, have an awesome two zero two four. Keep investing, stay safe from COVID. Not like us coughing all the way during this, uh, <laughs> this uh, podcast as well. Yeah. So I hope you guys have an awesome year ahead. And let's find out whether are we still doing Cafe Money in 2024. Bye, guys. Bye.